Hey everyone, Jay Wakefield here from the Nostalgia Mall. Wait, what? Okay, um, right. Apparently, I must have done something. I must have hit a wrong button because clearly this is not my channel. Anyway, welcome to this video. Now, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is telling you that uh, April Fool! <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this was, um, this was a wee bit of something that uh, Road Geek and I uh, kind of set up. We, uh, we decided to swap channels with one another, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a wee April Fool's prank, so, uh, <laughs> So yeah, um, if if you really, really, really want to see uh, Road Geek's video, um, the the one that you were expecting to see, um, well that could be anywhere on the internet by now. Um, but um, I would have to say that it's probably on my channel. Um, yeah, it's probably on my channel. Um, I, th I think uh, whatever happened to me must have happened to him. Uh, he's uh, yeah, so. Uh, Essentially, what we've done is the YouTube channel equivalent of um, a holiday, um, a holiday home swap, as it were. So, um, so yeah, uh, this is um, wow. <laughs> In my new living room as well. Uh, yeah, I really don't feel like I'm recording a video for uh, even on my channel, but uh, yeah, this um, well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not actually recording a video on my channel. Um, but, um, you've got me for the next, uh, video, so, uh, well, I suppose we best make the most of it. Now, um, back on my own channel, people have been asking, um, about the Compaq Armada E500, and, um, I'll be honest, I've not actually, uh, done much with it, um, at least not on YouTube. I mean, it has been with me, um, on, uh, various outings over the past year, um... Although I don't think I took it to Penumbra last time I was in. Um, actually, um, for those of you who were wanting to know um, if there was going to be, um, you know, any more Penumbra nonsense, um, no, unfortunately. Uh, can't do those videos anymore. Because <coughs> of, uh, well, data protection and, and I'm guessing nowadays um, GDPR. Um, <laughs> wouldn't it be GDR compliant, GDPR compliant if I uh, started doing Penumbra videos, so, um, well, yeah, um, but I, the last time I went into Penumbra was because I had, uh, parathyroid surgery last year, but anyway, here is, um, an old friend of mine, um, this is a Compaq Armada E500, and if we powered it on, If we actually power it on, <laughs> then I would not be at all surprised if um, the machine needed a new CMOS battery, if I'm honest. But um, <clears throat> once we uh, once we get past post, what we would find is that this machine will boot directly into Windows 2000 Professional. No sign of a boot menu or anything. And that is because, well, last year I finally, finally managed to get a hold of a restore CD for this machine. Unfortunately, it's a Windows 2000 disk. Yeah. And, um, you know, well, it's good to have the original image on Windows 2000. I kind of miss this thing running Windows 98. That's not to say that I'm going to get rid of the original image. What's going to happen, what I really want is to get another tool boot system going. So let me just log on. 
So, yeah, we will need a new CMOS battery, unfortunately. Um, however, we are actually running Windows 2000 uh, Professional on here. Now, the pr this is perfectly fine, except there is a slight issue. That is, the Compact Quick Restore will generally completely repartition and reformat the hard drive. So what we have is a great big gargantuan, actually, this partition is not an NTFS partition. Well, that's a turn up for the books. Oh well. Um, <clears throat> that could make things slightly easier. But what we are going to do is set up a dual boot and running Windows 98. We're not, however, going to use our Kronos OS selector. What we're actually going to use, we're actually going to test out PowerQuest Partition Magic. So I thought this partition was going to be NTFS, and actually... It is my intention to convert this partition to NTFS. So, let's get started. To be honest, I, I really must not have done much of anything um, with this machine after um, installing Windows 2000. Well, not apart from make the font bigger. That's literally all I've done. That's it. So, anyway, got a lovely wee install menu. You can install partition magic and boot magic. So we have a bootloader. So we should be able to make a dual boot system using PowerQuest Partition Magic. So let's um, let's get the installation started then. Kind of like that. You get partition magic for Windows 3.1 and DOS. Um, let's not make these desks just now. And I do not wish to register online. I can make the rescue diskettes at another time. Um, what I will do though, is I will go back to the auto run and I will install boot magic. Okay, so we've got boot magic and it's detected the operating system, Windows 2000 NT 2000 XP, brilliantly named. Um, right. Okay. So, now we need to actually go into Partition Magic, and uh oh, uh oh, uh, what? Partition's drive letter cannot be identified. Whoa, 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 what the bloody hell? 
Right, let's try restarting the machine. So, I have two floppy disks freshly labelled. So, let's go and make um, the um, Partition Magic uh, floppy disk boot set. Please insert a blank 1.44 megabyte three and a half inch diskette. Warning all data on the diskette will be erased. It's quite interesting how it uses the um, install wizard, um, the install shield wizard to make the boot disk. Now I have another uh, dialog box saying, please remove the diskette, label it Partition Magic Disk 1. This diskette is bootable and is necessary to access troubleshooting utilities. That's fine. Okay, please remove the diskette, label it Partition Magic Disk 2. Read rescue.txt located on the diskette for additional information. All right, we have a lovely set of uh, floppy disks. Right, let's, um, well, let's boot from them. Please insert partition logic disk two. Is that actually going to work? Let's hope it does. Uh oh. PowerQuest Partition Magic has detected an error t uh, 110 on the partition starting at sector 3 on disk 1. The length of the partition in the table is incorrect. Da -da 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 -da. Determine that the length can be changed to the correct value. Would you like Partition Magic to fix this error? Yep. Part partition table error was successfully fixed. Well, isn't that nice? So, here we are, we're in Partition Magic uh, 7.0 and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to resize the partition. Excellent. Um, and what I'm thinking is make that into a 40 gig partition. So, 4096 zero there we go <clears throat> 
One operations are currently pending. Apply changes now. Yep. So that's going to sit and resize the partition. And it literally is taking no time at all. Although this um, could probably be uh, the kind of a, an operation that could uh, look like it's going to complete very quickly and actually is going to take half a year to do the last 0.5% or something. All operations are completed. Nice. Now I love how I can convert FAT32 to FAT but nothing else even though there are other options. Okay. That's not a problem though. What I can do though now is exit out of here. Um, the computer needs to reboot so that all your drive letters will be accessible. Okay, that sounds good. <clears throat> and that's exactly what it's a way to do. Okay, so. Right. Now I want to convert this partition to be an NTFS partition. So I can do that by going into a command prompt and then typing convert C slash FS NTFS. It'll say the type of system is fat, file system is FAT32. Convert cannot gain exclusive access to the C drive. Um, so it cannot convert it now. Would you like to schedule it to be converted the next time the system restarts? Yes. The conversion will take place automatically the next time the system restarts. That's good. Well, we can do that. <clears throat> right now, we can restart the system. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, hopefully this won't completely uh, destroy um, everything I've worked so hard to build. So this will take some time. So now the drive has been converted. Well, let's see what happens. need to run the boot magic install well that's okay I yeah about that probably should create a boot magic rescue desk as well So, this drive is now NTFS, or at least the partition is. Good. So, let's install Boot Magic. Boot Magic cannot be installed because there is no visible FAT16 FAT or FAT32 primary, primary, primary partitions on the first hard disk. That is not going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a boot diskette. Boot magic cannot be installed because there is no R. Oh. Well, maybe I will just get partition made magic to make such partitions then. Also, that was a bit stupid to install boot magic and then get rid of the NTFS partition. So let's 
let's get rid of it. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've completely, um, I have completely garfunkled that. So, now we're back in the DOS version of Partition Magic. So, the partition uh, has now been turned purple. Um, well, first of all, I want to check this for errors. No errors found, that's good. Next thing, time to create a FAT32 partition, the primary one, beginning of an allocated space. Um, label, Windows 98. And let's apply that. Operation one operations are currently pending. Apply changes now. Yep. Excellent. We now have more partitioned. So now we have two partitions, so what I'm going to do is I'll let the um, computer reboot and no doubt I'll want to uh, run check disk because oh, there's a new partition in town. Let's just forget that ever happened, okay? Okay, now, once again, I'm going to see if I can get partition magic to work on this partition. No! And there's Windows 98. Nice. Now that that partition exists, let's inst let's reinstall Boot Magic. And now we can reinstall it. Error finding home partition. Right, let's uninstall and reinstall, shall we?
right. <clears throat> I've uninstalled it. Now time to reinstall. Ah. Now it's actually going to install to the FAT32 partition. Per request recommends the creation of a bootable Boot Magic Rescue Diskette. To create a Boot Magic Rescue Diskette, you will need a blank formatted diskette. Got one! Would you like to create the diskette? Yes, I would like to create the diskette. Please insert a blank 1.44 megabyte three and a half inch diskette. So, and we'll let that create the uh, floppy disk. <coughs> okay, now that is interesting. It has created an entry for uh, Windows 9X. We can change the names. That's quite cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now reboot and see exactly <coughs> what will happen if I try and go into that partition. Whether it'll actually uh, prompt me, hey, well, you might need some, uh, you know, uh, like uh, installation media, like uh, games for, uh, you know, the operating system and that. Okay, so I've got Windows NT 2000X or XP or Windows 9X or MS DOS. So that's quite that's quite useful. It's actually now saying invalid system disk. So I'm guessing um, I could maybe go ahead and insert a system disk at. That's quite interesting that that's done that. <clears throat> okay, I have a Windows 98 CD-ROM in the drive. Oops, I prematurely inserted that. Trust me to prematurely Windows 98. Anyway, um, <clears throat> well, let's get a floppy. So I have a Windows 95 disk in drive A. Right, maybe that's not how you do it. Maybe I can actually go and install Windows as I normally would. Right, I'm booted from the Windows 98 CD. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm going to make the partition Oh, sugar, I can't. Damn. Right. OK. 
Okay, let's see if I can system boot the partition. Yep, that seems to have worked. And now... And there we go. Okay, so that's the install files copied. Now let's see if I can boot from that partition on Boot Magic. Well, that works. Excellent. So, we can now hopefully start setting up Windows 98. Enough of that. <clears throat> Usual Windows 98 fair. No internet connection sharing, mind. Unfortunately, using the British keyboard layout. Establishing my location, United Kingdom. But for how much longer? Okay, now Windows 98 is a way to install, so I guess it is time for a cup of tea. And so, we're at the uh, portion of setup where um, I actually um, input my user information and the product key. Windows 98 has Windows 98 saved all information. Click finish to continue starting Windows 98.
Oh, and now we've got the uh, PC card uh, wizard. So now Windows 98 has just about finished installing, in fact it has. So let's see if it's um, damaged the uh, boot magic uh, boot file. If so, I have uh, the rescue diskette here. Okay, so it kind of has, but that's okay, because uh, now we get to go into the Boot Magic Rescue Diskette and see what's what. What? That is not a good sign. Boot magic configuration program not found. Please reinstall boot magic. Well. At least I can get into uh, Windows 2000. Well, that's the theory anyway. So, so far this has gone less than brilliantly, I've, I've got to say. I'm um, uh, really, uh, yeah, not the keenest on this, got to say. Well, I've just tried going into Windows 2000 and I can't get Boot Magic to work and nor can I reinstall it. Apparently, um, reinstalling Boot Magic um, is not possible because apparently it's on a hidden partition. The whole thing is... Yeah. What the hell, you know? You, the home partition is either hidden or not marked active. Um, boot Magic Boot will activate the home partition and reboot. If you are using tri drive translation software, remove the floppy disk and allow, allow the drive overlay to load from the hard drive. Press the spacebar and control key when prompted to boot from the floppy disk. All right. Okay. I wonder if it's because I've uh, asked it to boot 
<coughs> from the um, Windows 2000 partition. Right. Here's to hoping Windows 98 will actually work. Damn it! Well, I've managed to do at least one thing, get into the Boot Magic configuration, and I'm gonna go to File and then Boot Magic Enabled. And um, so that should um, help things, at least. Um, Can at least change the icon as well, that's kind of nice. Nice! All different kinds of icons. Next thing I want to do is uh, just check the hard disk for any errors. And let's see what happens now. And there we go, we've got Boot Magic back. Well guys, I really don't know what to tell you here with this one. This has been quite a failure. I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to reinstall Windows 2000 from the original uh, Restore media, but then I'm going to use Acronis OS Selector. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay, everyone. So, um, Quite a while has now passed, so 
what um, has happened is, well, I've had issues with the um, Windows 2000 install, and for whatever reason, I don't seem to be able to put Windows 2000 at the beginning of the drive anymore with that Chrome SOS selector like you used to be able to do. I don't know what I'm doing differently. I'm going to have to go back and look at some of my older videos and see what I did. Anyway, <clears throat> what I've decided to do was just to put my own installs of both 98 and 2000 on the machine and, uh, you know, kind of take it from there. So, 2000 is on the D drive unfortunately um i'm starting to think though that i know how to do what i was doing so rather than putting windows 2000 at the end of the beginning of the drive still put it at the end of the drive but make the F ntfs partition first oh delightfully devilish seymour anyway um that is something to try um, at a later time, but we have, um, we do have um, Windows 98 and Windows 2000 Professional working. So, what we're going to do is um, we're going to play some games on um, each. Well, we'll play some games on the 98 partition, you know, nothing too leery or too over too much uh, too long because I mean this video has actually gone on for quite a while I did take the um, I did install some of the stuff from the um, original restore CD and I have taken some of the OEM stuff as well so um, oh well isn't that nice <laughs> yes this is so me okay it is it, it just is <laughs> Congratulations! You have Microsoft Works installed on your Compact Armada E500. So, um, <laughs> you've got WorkSuite. Congratulations! Your PC came pre installed with Microsoft WorkSuite 2001. With WorkSuite, you have hundreds of templates to get you started quickly, the easy to use task launcher, and all of these Microsoft applications, Work 6.0, Word 2000, Money 2001, Encarta World Atlas 2001. I don't have that though. <laughs> Chose not to install that. Um, publish it, publishing, no, Picture It's Already Publishing 2001, and Auto Route 2001. So, I suppose I should uh, probably show work suite you've got the different programs and what you can do or you, you've got a task centric view so um there we go text read yay armada yay armada e500 I've got um, Encarta Encyclopedia 2001. That's something I installed myself. I don't know why the American versions of Works Suite tended to come with Encarta Encyclopedia, but the UK version tended to come with Encarta Waddled Atlas. Now, while I think a Waddled Atlas is a good idea, I certainly think Encarta Encyclopedia, a lot of people would have had more use out of it. So I don't know why we got World Atlas and people in the US got Encarta Encyclopedia. Of course, this all stops with, um, with Work Suite 2002 when everyone would get Encarta Encyclopedia. Another program that is different. I'm not sure I've uh, discussed this about WorkSuite before on this channel, but another program that is different is we get AutoRoute and um, in the UK versions. And the US versions generally tend to come with a program called Streets and Tips. 
And, <clears throat> I mean, that is, um, again, that's not something that is a problem because Auto Route actually um, will show you roads in Europe, or at least how they were, let's be honest, in the year 2000. Um, whereas Streets and Tips tends to cover the United States. Huh, that's nice. African roads. I wonder how, um, I wonder, I wonder where um, the outer reaches are. So you've got, you certainly got place names in Russia, but you don't tend to have roads. Oh well, something I could uh, look into. And yeah, you do get a whole world map, but um, and I'm guessing you again. Whoopsie, you get place names, but um, you wouldn't actually get. Um, you know what? Let's actually see if we can find where Billy lives on auto route. I. I don't think we would be able to. I think we'll probably find the town. But, um... I certainly don't think we'll find any roads. And I know Billy's probably, um... <laughs> this is probably uh, quite uh, painful for Billy to watch. Um, because I have no idea where he is. On this map. Well, I found, um, I found Raleigh. And I found Burlington. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Found it. So, so, yeah. According to Auto Route, Billy basically lives in the middle of a nowhere at all. So there we there we go. <laughs> and then of course you've got a whole glut of internet services provided both by uh, well mostly by MSN. You can start MSN, um, and then you get the internet connection wizard. Because I'm not online, you've got phone sync, Windows CE, device synchronization. <laughs> Might want to install Active Sync for that. Palm compatible device synchronization and help and ideas. Nice. So let's have a wee play with that croc, shall we? What a croc! running beautifully on this machine, I might add. This looks... It looks like Croc 2 on... The, the graphics of Croc 1 on PC, they look very Croc 2-ish. You know, probably because I actually have good graphics and I'm able to run this game quite well, actually. I mean, it does support 2D mode as well, so, you know, I mean, you can you can run this game quite well on absolute shite, if I'm honest. I have run this um, somewhat successfully in VirtualBox running Windows 2000, actually. Um, I believe using... Um, the uh, VESA VBE driver. So, that's, I mean, that is something. I can do that, and oops.
I'm not doing too well at the moment. That's something, and this is something I liked about Croc, is it's not a fixed perspective uh, 3D. I mean, it does mean the camera was always a wee bit... Yeah, but... And yeah, it did make it harder. But it's it's like... It's like, while... For the most part, I always had a kind of fixed perspective of going into these levels, but it was always quite easy to be able to just kind of turn around and, and actually have, and actually just take a good look around it. Just, you know, it was... I don't know, I, I, I was quite impressed at the time. I mean, when, when I first played this game, I was more used to stuff that had a uh, fixed 3D perspective, like Crash Bandicoot. Whoa, 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 whoa. But yeah, I'd been I'd been more used to fixed perspective 3D, like Crash, oh, Crash, uh, Crash Bandicoot. So uh, Croc and and Spider as well. Actually, thinking about it, I mean. That was that was more. The, there was more kind of there was more of a movable camera in Spider, but it it was you know you didn't get to choose the perspective. So that's Croc, and now let's uh, play something that uh, would be more typically played on this channel. Well, I can't find the game that I was going to play, so... Uh, <laughs> classic. Wow, it really doesn't want to play well on here, does it? Really? Really? I, I don't know. Well, I suppose we could try this in uh, Windows 2000. There was something that um, I was wondering, though. I must admit. And... Um, I, I think we should find out how well this machine can play Skyro's Christmas Special. Well, I can't off have, uh, just offhand find Skyro's Christmas Special. But, here we have Skyro's. Okay. So, whoopsie, so no sound effect, unfortunately. That went well. It's been su such a... Whoa! It's been such a long time since I played this game that it's actually bringing back memories. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes! Gonna have to find Skyroad's Christmas special and put it on my uh, network and play it on the Gateway 2000 or something. Whoa! I I'm not good at this.
Okay, um, I'm obviously not getting uh, too far with this. But, I mean, this machine does work. There is, I will say there is a bit of an issue with the sound on 98, though. It can jump in certain games and what have you, so... You know, I'm... Pff, as... Shocking as it might sound, unless I can get hold of a Windows 98 re quick restore disk, I'm starting wonder. I'm starting to really seriously wonder whether this would be better as a Windows 2000 laptop. I know, shock horror. Because I am a 98 junkie. I really am. So let's have a look at Windows 2000 now. The reason that I put 2000 on this machine at all is because I sometimes like to play Theme Park World and I have problems with the video drivers on Windows 98. It's not good. So, I'm going to need to log in, so I will go and do that. Also starting to wonder about the health of this drive. I don't think this drive should be this slow. go so let's see if I can get fatty bear to go I've actually dropped the uh, color in the re color depth and resolution down that sounds better So what's the issue with Windows 98? Do I just have really crap sound drivers? I love you, Fatty Bear. Boink. There's a lot of work to do before Kayla wakes up. I want to make her a big, beautiful birthday cake. Oh, will she ever be surprised. I'd better get busy, too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. We know! Oh, Gretchen, that sounds wonderful. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. Fatty Bear, would you like some help making the birthday cake? I'm a heck of a cleaner upper. Oh, yes. Thank you, Matilda Rabbit. That would be nice. <laughs> I 
and away she goes. Now I like how you could just, I could just go exploring any room in the house that I wanted to. Let's switch on the uh, computer. I wonder if it's, um, I wonder if it's an e-machine. Yep, it's an e-machine. Um, <clears throat> I could explore any room in the house. I'm so excited about Kato's party. But it's only when I go down to the kitchen that Matilda Rabbit appears. Where is she the rest of the time? This looks like the place to bake Kato's In fact, Fatty Bear still beats her to the kitchen. You. I thought you'd be waiting down in the kitchen for me. That would make sense. But whatever you do, if you go straight down to the kitchen, or if you just mess about around the house, and then go to the kitchen, Fatty Bear still gets there before her. Where does she go? Whoopsie. I quite like this song. <laughs> you never know, one stick of butter. I'll take that for the cake. Good. It's a bone. You never know when I might need this. Oh yeah, every good cake should have a bone in it. I need this milk for the cake. Eggs. I need two of those for the cake. Yuck. Leftovers again. Well, is it not a bowl of leftovers that's making it congeal like that? Actually, forget the leftovers. What the hell's in that purple bowl? Can we not make it a chocolate orange cake? Just have a wee uh, squidgy of the orange. Hey, pal, can I have a squidgy of your orange? For the cake. I should leave them on the counter. Oh well, got some stuff on the counter. <laughs> I know on Windows 2000 it just kind of plays each song end to end without any kind of gap. I'll definitely need chocolate chips for a chocolatey chip cake. So it's almost like it's a Fatty Bear music medley on Windows 2000. This will help my cake rise. Don't rise to it. Just, just don't. Leave it out. Just don't rise to it. You're better than that, cake. You're better than that. Vanilla. I need that for the cake. That's what you ha that's what happens when you live too close to a nuclear power station. The popcorn will just pop itself in the cupboard. Okay, maybe we're not supposed to put sardines in the cake. What about honey? I do believe there are some things in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave them on the counter. Anyway, We've, uh, I think we've played enough uh, Fatty Bear's birthday surprise. Um, if you want to watch more of this game being played, then um, there are several videos on this channel, which um, should no doubt sate anybody's um, Fatty Bear curiosity. Okay, here's a good question. How well does Skyroads play under Windows 2000? Okay, looks like I'm going to have to do the music myself. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. And let that be a lesson to the rest of you kids. Don't try DOS gaming under Windows 2000. It ain't pretty. Anyway. <laughs> well, we have an, a slightly updated version of Kidpix, so um, I guess we could go in and play some of that. 
Kid Picks Studio Deluxe. Why, why would I want the CD? Why, why would I need that in the drive? And that's just... Have you ever noticed how, how this is just basically a billboard for all of um, the learning company's properties? Why can't I just get Kid Picks? Just, just the, the actual Kid Picks program itself. Never needed the CD. Never needed the CD for Kid Picks 2.5. And certainly didn't need the CD for Kid Picks 1.0. Mostly because that, I believe, came on a flippity floppity disk. Okay, let's try that again now that we have the uh, we have the CD in the drive. Got you. Slightly different picture. So this is, well it is slightly different software, but still uses the old 16 bit save as dialogues. I'm, I'm wondering if this is even 32 bit. Yeah. The animation still plays way too quickly. <laughs> so this version of Kid Picks, I think. Even though it's slightly up to date, I think it just has more features rather than actually being more be uh, better optimized for um, faster machines. In my uh, video on the um, iBook G3, I actually do talk a bit about that. How kid picks will, how kid picks as animations will generally tend to run at a consistent speed even on, you know, even on a fast Apple Mac. So that is something to think about. Anyway, I think, um, I think we've come to a point of the video where we can uh, end. So I would like to thank you all for watching. Um, please feel free not only to subscribe to, uh, to this channel that you're watching, well, if, if you're not already done so, but also to my channel, if you uh, like uh, the content that you've seen in this video tonight, um, I can be found at uh, youtube.com forward slash the flying Scotsman. And um, I do lots of videos like this about uh, old computers, uh, some sometimes newer than uh, some of Billy's machines, but... Um, yeah, I've done um, I've done a very uh, I've done a wee variety of videos myself, including um, the decorating of the room that you see behind the computer just now, and um, like I said, I've also uh, done a video about a clamshell iBook G3. So if you want to see uh, things like that, then um, please head on over to my channel. But as always. Please continue to uh, subscribe to this channel, which is um, youtube.com forward slash the nostalgia mall. I'd uh, like to thank Billy for um, actually coming up with this idea of uh, switching channels uh, for a video. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually been quite an honour to uh, work on Billy's channel. I uh, never thought that. Um, you know, when I started watching Billy's videos eight years ago, that um, I one day would be actually making full videos on the channel, hosting a full video on the channel. It just just never occurred to me that that would ever be a thing. But um, thanks anyway, uh, thanks anyway, Billy, and um, I'm sorry for all the disrepute that I've now brought the channel into. <laughs> but um, anyway, thank you for watching, and please please do join us for our next respective videos.
Judy Bay. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.